Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus certification training course. This module is on differentiating between Windows versions. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to discuss the requirements from our CompTIA A Plus 22702, our practical application exam, section 2.2. This is a new section in the 700 series exam where we need to differentiate between Windows operating system directory structures, user file locations, system file locations, a lot of different places in the operating system itself. There are differences between Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. And you need to know what those differences are between all three of those operating systems. Although we have three different operating systems that we have to consider for the CompTIA 700 series A plus exam, the differences between all three are relatively minor. So this won't be as hard as it sounds to be able to differentiate between these different versions of Windows. For instance, here are user files. Whenever we're saving a document, we've got a spreadsheet up. We're doing word processing. We're working on a presentation. And we save the file. There is a section of your hard drive, a certain set of folders, that is dedicated to storing your user information. If there are multiple users that log into a machine, there will be separate folders within this directory structure for every individual user. And the idea is that if you ever need to back up all of your individual user files, you can just grab that particular directory for that user, make sure that it's backed up before you do anything else with it. In Windows 2000, this is the Documents and Settings directory. It's right off the root. In Windows XP, it's exactly the same thing. So not much changed between 2000 and XP as to where those particular documents are stored. In fact, you can see this is Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. I put all three on the screen for each one of these so that you can see what the differences are. In the documents and settings, there's administrator and all users and default user. And in fact, in Windows XP, the documents and settings folder, which is right off the C drive, also has administrator and all users and XPM user, which is the user that I use for that Windows XP to log in. So they're right there off the root. But you'll notice in Windows Vista, it has moved those to a different place. It's still right off the root, but it's a user's directory. Notice that Documents and Settings is not even in Windows Vista. You don't even see it in there. So everything is now stored in the Users folder. And my Users folder has a Professor folder, which is the username that I use to log on to that Windows Vista machine and a public folder. So that's the only thing that you have to remember about the user files and where they are is that 2000 and XP, exactly the same under Documents and Settings. Under Windows Vista, everything has been moved to the Users folder. System files changed a little bit as we moved from Windows 2000 to Windows XP in that in Windows 2000 and before, everything was stored under the WinNT directory right off the root. Windows NT, obviously one of the very first enterprise operating systems that Microsoft introduced. And so when, we, when Windows 2000 came out, a lot of it was built on the Windows NT architecture. And we, they kept the name as the default root for where all of the system files were stored. When Windows XP came along, Microsoft decided we should be more generic with this. So they changed the name just to Windows. It's still off the root, and it's now just generically called Windows. The default in Windows XP actually had everything in uppercase, although I'm not sure you really have to worry about case when it comes to understanding this for the A plus exam. Windows Vista also kept this in the Windows directory as well. And that's one nice thing is that they stayed very consistent from that point on, that everything was just going to be called Windows. And if you're a developer and you're trying to figure out where do I put my files, where are things located, makes it a little bit easier easier now that we're past that Windows 2000 stage where things were in the WinNT directory. Imagine if every Windows version had a separate name for where all of its system files were stored. Fortunately, all we have to remember from Windows XP on is that it's in the Windows folder. Now that we know where the system files are, it becomes a lot easier to figure out where some of these other folders are that rely on the system. The fonts folder is a very good example of this. If you get rid of the fonts that's the end of, at the end of every single one of these, notice that the WinNT folder, the Windows folder, the Windows folder for 2000 XP and Vista are exactly the same system folders we just saw. The only difference, if you add fonts onto the end, that's where the fonts folder is. So it's really just under wherever the system folder is. That's an easy one to remember. So if you get that on your exam, all you have to remember is that Windows 2000 was WinNT with fonts at the end. Windows XP and Vista were Windows with fonts at the end. Makes it very easy to remember. 
Just like with fonts, the temporary file locations are a similar structure, where we have that system directory, whatever it happens to be, and then the word temp at the end of it. So in Windows 2000, it's WinNT temp, Windows XP Windows temp, Windows Vista, again, Windows and temp. So as long as you know that root of where the system files are stored, you'll automatically know where your fonts are. You'll automatically know where your temporary files are. One thing that has been consistent through all of these different versions of software is where your programs are stored. When you install a program, when you uh, run the setup program to add a, a program to your hard drive, the default place that it puts all of them is the program files directory. So all the programs that you're using, wherever they might happen to be, are all in the program files directory. And it's exactly the same if you're in Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. That's a gimme question. You aren't, aren't going to be able to go wrong. Just remember, everything is stored under program files. In Windows, you're able to operate online when you're on the internet, and you're surfing web pages, and you're storing things. But it also has an offline mode or cached mode. There's this client-side cache of information that is stored on your computer. It's all automatic. It stores it on your system. There are ways within the control panel that you can go and remove this information. But it's something that, by default, you may not necessarily have access to. If you remember your system folders, this offline files and folders are all stored in a folder called CSC. Now, by default, you won't even be able to see that folder. It's a system folder. You have to go under the Tools menu within your Windows Explorer and go to the Options and actually tell the Windows Explorer, I would like to be able to see system files and folders. And only if you are checking that will it be able to actually show you that that CSC folder really exists. But uh, be, just know that if you don't see it, it really is there behind the scenes. It may just be hidden from you. In the case of Windows Vista, it even goes a step further to tell you you're not an administrator on this machine. You don't even have access to that folder. You can remove that through looking at uh, removing some of the offline files and folders when you do a disk cleanup. Otherwise, you really don't have access to those things. That cache is very important. And you really can't go in and modify those things without really creating some problems with your operating system. So Vista took an extra step and made sure that you did not have direct access into that cache folder, nor did it does anything else that you're running, which is another nice security feature. Just remember that the CSC folder is right off your system folder for those operating systems, and you'll be just fine for the questions on your exam. Let's see what we can remember now about where all of these different files and the directory structures are different between these different Windows versions. Our first question is, where are users files stored in Windows Vista? Now, if you remember, Windows Vista was a little bit different than Windows 2000 or Windows XP, where we had this Documents and Settings folder. Now everything is in a Users folder. Our next question is, where are fonts stored in Windows 2000? Now remember, the Fonts folder was underneath your System folder. So you have to think about what the System folder was for Windows 2000. And if you answered WinNT slash fonts, then you got it right. And our last question, where are program files stored in Windows XP? Where do we keep all of our program files? Well, remember, this one's a bit of a gimme because it's exactly the same in Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. It's in the Program Files directory. Well, that covers the requirements from our 227.02 section 2.2, where we've needed to know where all of these different file types are stored, where our programs are stored, our user files, and all of the things that are in between. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message board, send me a message, or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.